it is my absolute pleasure to bring to you the cast from The Nanny, one of the best shows in the entire 1990s spectrum. Okay, I said it, you heard it, I meant it, it's real. Uh, make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, as we first bring to the vir virtual stage, Renee Taylor, hello, absolute hello. pleasure. Hello. hello, how are you? Great, if there's anybody from Switzerland, send me some chocolate. <laughs> you heard that here, okay? Next yeah. up, we have Nicole Tom, hello. Hi! Absolute, absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. How are you doing? So happy today? to be here. Oh, oh I'm it's doing fantastic. great. Fantastic. <laughs> Next Hi, we, have, <laughs> we have Charles Shaughnessy. Going Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. And last but certainly not least, let's make some noise for Miss Laura Lane. Hello. Hey, hello, hello. How Lynn, are you guys great to be doing? Here. Oh, my goodness. Obviously, uh, this is a very strange year for everyone. 2020 is absolutely weird. How are you guys doing? Why is it weird? Um, well, <laughs> there's a plethora of, of strange occurrences going on around the world. COVID-19, any number of uh, bits of unrest. So are you guys staying safe, sane, not, not killed anything. anyone? I have to say, personally, you know, getting up whenever I like, going to bed whenever I like, and and not feeling bad about it, reading books, watching TV, eating chocolate anytime <laughs> I like, and just not feeling bad because, hey, there's nothing else to do. I'm not hating that part of it. There are other parts that are pretty awful, but but that part's... It's kind of a balance. It's kind of a balance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I totally just understand. Getting, you know, home projects done that I've always wanted to do. and Give us an example. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. <laughs> I really I enjoy making chandeliers um wow. and so I've made like four, uh four chandeliers I'm um cool. you know I'm I'm building a brick patio right now that's wow amazing. um which is Look really how handy you are. yeah I was gonna say like that's, that's kind of still amazing those bricks are heavy Right. This is a whole post-pandemic right. career. Yeah, yeah. I noticed that the name of my shovel, too, that I'm like, you know, digging all the, the dirt up um, from, it's called a, a Corona sho shovel. Whoa, whoa. Which I was like, is that whoa. like a little, mm. I mean, what is that? I mean, for, for just a second, I thought you were like naming your tools. <laughs> <laughs> this is Margaret. This, is <laughs> this one's Corona. I mean, yeah. I mean, that might be a sign of something very bad. I don't want to say that. that. An unfortunate name for a shovel. Yeah, like, yeah, you know? yeah. Oh my goodness, Renee, how are you doing in the midst of all of this? Great. I'm so excited about making this sex tape with all of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, my Next grandmother's week. gonna watch this and she's gonna be like, "Are you doing what?" And I'm like, "Nana, it pays the bills. What do you want me to do?" Okay, this is what it is. Oh my goodness, we all got to see Renee do her her most recent stage show. Renee, what would, what would, did you call it? My life on a diet. It, it's about what I was eating, what diet I was on while I was living my life. It was that brilliant. brilliant. And that I think amazing. all of us were there. Maybe, I'm not I sure. But I, opening night in Beverly Hills. It was yeah. so yeah, it exciting. Was great. It was so exciting and I had to pay you very little to come. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a food spread though? That's the real question. Oh, oh yeah. Brand okay. Peter See? were there. That was nice. Yeah. The writers yeah. from The Nanny were there. The creators. It was really an exciting reunion. That is awesome. But it that wasn't is... like the sex tape that we're doing today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. Please continue. Continue. Well, I, I was going to say, my friends live in, um, I think all of you are in Los Angeles. I'm in Austin, Texas, which is an insane place where people no, don't. I hear it's a very in place now. Uh, it's a, it is a cool city, except there's a lot of politics about whether or not to wear a mask and what that represents. And there's just that insanity. But yeah, it's a very cool town. I Very hear it's so. like Greenwich Village used to be. Uh, I never lived in Greenwich Village when it used to be. Well, when I was the younger actress, 
I used to live in Greenwich Village, and that was an exciting, artistic, creative place. Mm -hmm. Now I'm living in Manhattan, right across the street from Lincoln Center. Oh, oh beautiful. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. I'm Are loving you your backdrop, too, because this is that's fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. Very so very I moved well. here because I love the Metropolitan Opera, and I want you to go to opera. So that's why I moved here. But nice. right now, there's not too much opera. Okay. Unfortunately, oh, I've unfortunately. always wanted to go to the opera. I've never been. Oh well, we're gonna have to make a date for that. All over, yeah. come to New York and stay with me, and we'll go to the opera. Together. You know, my yeah. um, my new uh, what do you call it? My daughter's mother-in-law. My daughter just got married. Had a pandemic wedding in a parking lot wow. in, uh, in Florence. In uh, they had these ticket booths set up in a parking lot, and you drive down there, and the two of them with their masks on. Then they got a text. They walked to the ticket booth, and the guy married them on a walkie-talkie. Wow! And that was it. So, and they'd had this huge wedding planned. We were, you know, we were looking, staring down the barrel of like a thousands of dollars of wedding. It ended up taking thirty seconds and cost sixty bucks. Wow. <laughs> I mean, the point is, his the her new husband's mother is a was a director. She directed at the Met. Uh, uh, it that's brilliant. Oh, my goodness. That's amazing. So the thing that's brought us all together is the show The Nanny. And it was one of my favorites. Um, I, I have to admit, I adored the show. And it fit a certain model of, you know, different cultures coming together in one household and people of different walks of life finding that common ground, which I feel is so very important for those of us today to really appreciate. What was it like to be a part of this show when, when it was put together? Well, it was great, except for the people that were <laughs> They were all snobs. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Renee's got all the jokes today. I love it. I love it. You know, we were the little engine that, that could. You know, no one gave us any. We were like that. I don't know whether you all remember, but that year, that season, there were all these big names. Faye Dunaway had a TV series. All kinds of big names had TV series. And when we went to New York for the upfronts, where they kind of present the new show, the nanny was right. We were actually next to the kitchen. We were way back. Our table wow. was literally next to the kitchen. People would come up and ask us, you know, <laughs> if, if they could get an extra ice cream and things like that. And, and so no one gave us much of a shot. And we were the little engine that could. All those other shows, if it, you know, bit one by one, they got canceled. And we just sort of kept going. And it was it was very exciting because we were all sort of experiencing this for the first time. Yeah, it was uh, uh, my my first, um, uh, you know, sitcom. Actually, my first sitcom was um, the Drew Carey show, but um, I, I got fired off of that. <laughs> but that's then, a story. We're going to talk about then that. We, what? I said, that's a story. We're going to have to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. But then, um, then they uh, fired, like, the wife from that show. It was a different Drew Carey show. Okay. And then, like, the next week they fired Drew Carey, and then he created um, a new show. Oh, wow. so you were in good company. Yeah. 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 Fired I heard Everybody got fired from it. We were brought uh, up on a morals charge. What? That's kidding. <laughs> she's she's <laughs> ribbing you right now. In the I, best I don't think the audience that the, the folks that are with us today might not know about, um, <laughs> that, and uh, not necessarily what Renee said. Great joke, Renee. I didn't but, know. Um, uh, that when we're doing a pilot, we, we most of the time you don't know if you're right. going to keep that role, keep that job every day. You spend however long, maybe a week, maybe 10 days, maybe two weeks. Um, and you don't I mean, it happens constantly. They replace people because of chemistry or who knows. What right. The right. Is. And they yeah. always say it's nothing personal, but you're fired. Right. Yeah, it was um pretty devastating right. a little oh, of course no doubt. No but doubt. then you would never have done the nanny if that had imagined yes. that had kept going yeah that's right that's that's you would have been on the nanny <laughs> it all worked <laughs> out yeah it's everyone always. that was in our cast they were cat from the beginning nobody nobody got fired that's fantastic <laughs> yeah that's fantastic well grandma yetta um we didn't she uh she yes. was yes she was we don't talk about that i'm sure oh. <laughs> that was that was a very like monotone we don't we don't bring that up okay we don't do that 
<laughs> that's on the hush. That's family business. It's not for everybody. That's what that oh, was. Right no, there. When we do the gossip part of the show. <laughs> we can definitely get into that. We can definitely get into that. Um, Charles, how did you feel about being a part of the show uh, when it began? Me? Yes. Uh, oh, it was so exciting. Well, as I say, you know, you just don't know what you've got. My my concern was um, being a sitcom dad. I'd be absolutely honest. And I knew that the business was littered with the corpses of sitcom dad. <laughs> so I actually said to my agent, I said, listen, you know, okay, but this has to run a long time because, you know, sitcom dads, you don't get a second shot. That's it. You're a sitcom dad. That's who you are. And thank God it did run for six years. So even though I was right and I was then sort of stuck as a sitcom dad for a long time, but it was kind of worth it. Um, but I didn't, you know, none of us knew it was going to be this kind of a success when we started. We just knew we had a really good pilot. We had a really good cast. We had a really good script for that first show. Um, so we, we were caught we, and we had a great cartoon um, opening title. <laughs> Indeed. That's what made it. So, um, so we felt good, but you never know. And the network was sort of taking us off and putting us on and changing the night. And then we'd have a hiatus and no one knew if we were coming back. And then in the summer, it sort of caught fire and it was run. So, yeah, it was really exciting. I remember Fran saying, you know, hold on tight. This is going to be a rocket ride. And it, it was. It That's was, amazing. It was. But I heard that they had a problem with you, that they were worried you were too good looking. Mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I get that a lot, Renee. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just something I have to live with. You know, uh -huh. I've made peace with it. Listen, the struggle is real out here. The struggle is real. I love it. Lauren, how about you? How was it being a part you know, of the show? I was just thinking about, um, and this is another thing that the audience, the fans might not know about, the sort of sequence of events of auditions that we do f for any project. But for a television pilot, there's generally, now probably Charlie and Renee knew they had their jobs straight out of the box. I don't know. But I auditioned. So what was interesting to me was watching really famous comedians like SNL people, et cetera, um, who I loved, but and and were I was intimidated by, you, you know, fall off slowly, you know, as you narrow it down to like, oh, it's between this one and this one. And the, it, that's just the way it is. You know who your competition is and they're going to be in the same room with you waiting wow. to go in to audition. And then you do something called going to network. And that um, is when there's a room full of suits, like, like, oh, let's say 80 suits they're not they're not the easiest audience and i remember charlie i the scene that i had auditioned with over and over i was massaging your shoulders and i can't remember what i was saying something like oh you need <laughs> you need a shiatsu i remember that i was saying like doing a little twirl on that on that word and uh so i went in did my audition came out in a hall and I'm, you're just waiting there danny and i were both auditioning on the same night I, I don't know if everyone did or anyway, I came back out and then this man in a suit came out and said, Hey, that was super. That was just terrific. Could you do it again and just be, um, more real? Oh, wow. That's <laughs> Oh, you want to hear something funny? I auditioned for Seinfeld and they said I was too real. Wow. But they wanted wow. somebody who was more cartoony. Isn't that <laughs> funny? Wow. Well, what's, of course, what I said was absolutely. And I went in <laughs> and I did it much without the spin on anything. They loved that. So they could see that I could do it both. You know, that's one of the things they're looking for from actors, all of us. Like, can you take direction? Can you bring something that's your own? Um, but the truth is, I ended up playing her much, much more like the first read. In fact, exactly like the first <laughs> That's, that's what happens. I that's auditioned totally happens. nine times um, for wow. the Oh, my movie. God. Yeah. Wow. I mean, <laughs> nine great times because you're here, which is fantastic. So I can appreciate the work number. that that was. <laughs> we uh, actually I, have... I didn't audition at all because Fran said they will never hire you. <laughs> <laughs> that they want somebody 
like Sheila McRae, who's more Presbyterian. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so I'm just going to give you the job as a guest. <laughs> and then they'll say, hey, maybe she could do it. And I'll say, oh, no. And they'll say, yeah, yeah, give her a chance. So that's what happened. That's, that's the brilliance. How you take it. Yeah. Brandy's brilliant that way. She really... I mean, the the it's legend how she even got this pilot, um, yeah. like for us to shoot a pilot, which was basically cornering, oh, uh, um, the head. What was his name? Jeff. 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 Who was in first class on a plane? There was an empty seat next to him. Fran went, sat in the seat, and pitched the pilot. Wow. Wow. Okay, this is like a perfect time for a spinoff from a question from the fans. So we have Sweet Sensation 44 asks, what was it like to work with Fran uh, on this show? Obviously, she had such a hand in its happening. So what was it like to work with her as both the star and really a creator? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget that I, we were the first day of rehearsals of the pilot. Fran came in with this huge pot of chili for the gang. And she said, you know, we're going to be a family for a while. So mama's gonna make dinner. And she brought in, of course, I thought, oh, how sweet she's been up all night cooking it. Uh, <laughs> she had some people cooking it. But nevertheless, it was just such a great gesture that she actually brought in, you know, there was caterers to do all that. She said, you know, she wanted to bring it in. And that kind of set the tone. She was the boss and she was a really good boss and she had a handle so many different plates spinning. She was talking to networks and studios and casting and writing, um, but she was the powerhouse that made it all work, you know, from the middle. So it was, sometimes she was busy doing other things, but when she was present doing her job on the set, she was always very present. Uh, and then she'd be off doing other things. But I was always amazed at how she kept those plates spinning for six years. So she yeah, was she, very generous <clears throat> to people emotionally when she would act with you. She would, you know, just let you go and bring out the best in you all the time. And once she got over her drinking problem. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, she's not here to defend herself. That's so mean. <laughs> That's said in love, though. I know it is. I know it is. That's amazing. <laughs> oh. Lauren, how did you like, you know, kind of oh, being the foil of sorts? This to was my, I, I love, I love doing comedy. It's always my favorite, but I had done three uh, hour long dramas in a row before mm -hmm. the nanny. And so I wasn't really dealing with comedy, but it, it's my favorite thing to, to play. And so and also this format was the first time I've done a half hour. Um, so I was excited, but but similar to Renee, I had also auditioned. Do you remember the Gary Shandling, mm -hmm. uh, the talk show host? Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I forgot what am I, the name. But anyway, um, I had also Gary auditioned. Gary Shandling show. Because there was two shows. Was, right. that, was oh. that the one where he was the host? Oh, yeah. I host, yeah. Yeah. So I had auditioned to play his wife, oh. ex-wife, and it was through the same casting agency. Oh. Wow. And this is, you got to remember, this is before cell phones, everybody. <laughs> uh -huh. we're, we're calling our machines or our service or whatever to find out what's your next audition today or whatever. And I got a call from this casting agency, and literally this is what they said. You got the part. But I didn't know which show. <laughs> so you're like, yay! I don't know you, what I'm Something's what... good, but <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. Um, so that, uh, and, and auditioning for a half hour is very different that, for me than the, these hour long shows that I did. Um, and okay, I'll say, I have one more good story from the auditions, but um, working with Fran, look, however many years ago, we, we we, we started in 93, 92, 93, mm -hmm. um, to have a woman at the helm of everything and starring is sort of like Margot Thomas when she, when she created, you know, created and acted in and produced that right. girl, which was even, 
And we're still, you know, we're still having that battle today. Like, where are the female heads of XYZ? And there's Fran just doing it all and trying to have a life, which is try that on, you know. I'm thinking, you know, uh, female directors, too. Oh, yeah. It, Lee Shallot being the um, our director and Dorothy uh, Lyman for so many years. I mean, it's she was, um, she was she's a real role model, Fran. That's awesome. You know, yeah. she's a very That's strong awesome. woman. And she's a damn shark. She knows how to get <laughs> stuff done. That's right. You know? That's I admire right. that about her. That's that might be that New York mentality, just coming out and being. Don't take no for an answer. You just make it happen. That's it. Absolutely. Um, we actually have a couple more questions uh, lined up here. So uh, Mitch Schuler asked, what did you enjoy most about playing your characters? And because he specifically started with uh, Lauren, uh, what did you like most about playing Cece? Well, it really is fun to be mean. <laughs> it really is. It's, but because of the, um, d- look, Danny's role, uh, Daniel Davis, not, and we're very, very good friends. Um, he, he would have like the punchline always right. uh, and i would just have the at least for the first few years and then it kind of started to morph a little um so but it's sort of a straight person but you still have to um play non-stop irritation like episode after episode after episode <laughs> with surprise. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> like, um, and I think in the end, that's what they built their romance around was that they didn't, it was like a drug for them, right? <laughs> so, the um, snark of love. Really? Seriously, <laughs> like that weird, who knows if the marriage lasted. Danny and I, did, or no, I should say, I decided we had, cause I was pregnant too, uh, you know, that we named our children Winston and Princess. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's amazing. That's my answer. Somebody else. <laughs> Renee? Well, um, when I play somebody pushy, I always try to be innocent about it. Because I'm, I love when people are uh, aggressive and they're, Sometimes they really feel that they're innocent and they really feel that they're helping and they're giving to you. And so I always try to come from that place. Amazing. That's amazing. Right. Yeah. Very well said. Nicole. I, um, I, I think what I enjoyed most, I mean, it was, there were, it was major growing up years for me, mm-hmm. 14 to 21. I had my, well, I had my 15th birthday on the pilot and my 21st birthday on the very last episode. Wow. It just timed out that way. <laughs> and then I had my birthday on the pandemic um, episode too. <laughs> That's a little weird. Um, but I think uh, my most was uh, living the, the transformation of, um, uh, of Maggie. She was so beige in the beginning and, and then, you know, kind of broke out of her um, shell and I got to wear really cool clothes <laughs> and um, um, uh, just, you know, I got to, you know, grow up um, before my eyes. And, right, and right. Mine, so. right. You got to kiss eyes of the James world. Marsden. Right. What? You got to kiss Jimmy Marsden. Yeah. And I got That's to kiss Jimmy Marsden. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about? You, your abilities as a comedian are excellent. And, and I was just before we came on, I was thinking about that. Remember that scene with Rita Moreno where you were on the rope? <laughs> I remember oh Peter had to hold me up, and um, I was so embarrassed uh, because I couldn't so hold funny. myself on that rope. And so <laughs> he was like holding my butt up in the air, like out of camera, and then he ran off real quick, and then I was would just drop down. It was. I was. I, was like, I couldn't stop laughing um, because I was just like, I can't believe he's doing this. I can't believe I, you know, like, this is happening to me. It's so embarrassing. But whatever. It was great to see you on Masters of Sex. You had a good little run. It, but you, you were, you were so funny. Uh, that was, was so much fun. But um, great. Really, um, 
I mean, like my jaw hurt at the end of the end of the day. <laughs> um, this is about to take like, like all the, <laughs> the dirtiest turns. <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, for, because I was just smiling so she, much. She's smiling, people. She was smiling. Come on now, clean it up. Clean it up, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> but you know, Michael Sheen was uh, awesome to work with on on that. Just That's everybody amazing. made me feel so comfortable, and I loved I loved my brassy, you know part i was 50 pounds heavier for that role i went to did portland you, and drank a lot of wine. For it? did you um, gain weight for the role I, well they wanted they wanted like a um a, a it's not rubenesque is it rubenesque yes, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. really is that where rube like a ruben comes yeah. from no 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 <laughs> no no it's painting <laughs> painting yeah the painter <laughs> but, oh yeah. <laughs> okay but if you eat a lot of rubens you will you know, yeah um no i just ate a lot and um yeah um so i i didn't i didn't care about like you know when i found out i got the part i just i went on a binge wow wow best role best role possible yeah it was great that's amazing charles how did you like playing it with with Um, any how yeah yeah i think um my first the thing i liked at first was the challenge of um of learning a new accent um, to play the part, you know, to adopt this English accent, which, as you notice, I've kept. I, I think I was so successful, I maintained it in my real life. So now, <laughs> actually, it's a funny story because for years, even now, uh, people write in and say, I hear people saying, you know, the only problem with Charles Shaughnessy's performance was that his English accent was terrible and he should have taken <laughs> it from Danny Davis who's genuinely English. You know, and there's Danny from Little Rock, Arkansas. And I was <laughs> People still say it's the other way around. So that and you're like, cool. yeah, no, mine is not a play accent. This is how yeah. I talk. Seriously, <laughs> Danny Davis is really English. I'm faking it. Um, but no, the thing I, I enjoyed most was, you know, to begin with, I felt like Maxwell for the first season or so was in danger of being just a little too buffoonish. He was sort of always the butt of the jokes. He was always out of sort of didn't know what was going on. And um, and I remember uh, having my first kind of hissy fit <laughs> when I kind of walked into the writer's room one day and said, you know, this is just, you've got to, you've got to let me smarten up a little bit. Um, otherwise, he's just not going to be attractive at all. Mm-hmm. And they agreed. And so we gradually sort of made him Um, transition from just the sort of comic, you know, buffoon to this potential romantic interest, which I thought was much more interesting way to go. And um, so I enjoyed that, that sort of keeping him the sort of what we called a stunned beast. There was a line in one show where Maxwell stands in the middle of the room like a stunned beast while all this chaos is going, which reminded me of my dad. My dad flashed into my head. but I like the fact that he could be, he was a stunned beast, but he was also, uh, you know, could be uh, uh, charming and attractive as well. So that of was fun to find. Renee, can, can you do your best stunned beast? Yeah, it's just like kind of, yeah. what, 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 what's going on? My dad would do that. My dad's a writer. He was a writer. And That's he would amazing. sometimes come down from his office and my two brothers, my brother and I would be, yelling and shrieking and my mom was trying to deal with the dog that had just crapped on the carpet and you know all this goes and he would just come down he'd stand in the middle of the room and go yeah yeah okay well i'll see you later is that a stunned beast that's the stunned beast that's the that's the one that's the one you know from, from all my eating on the show i gained so much weight that I brought a letter from my doctor saying Renee has to stop eating on the show because she's gaining too much weight and it's not good for her. And um, the producer, Peter Mark Jacobson, said, well, Renee, don't eat at rehearsal so much. Mm, mm, <laughs> mm. You're like, no, I'm trying to build character here. I'm trying to get into it. <laughs> we well, actually have a question. Him to say he didn't have the gorgeous pastries and stuff. Exactly. 
2020 JN ask uh, uh, for Lauren uh, the, the, that they love your catatonic facial expression in the cellar scene. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Can you can you do that oh, right now? They want some acting. And they want to know what you were thinking when you did it. Oh, first of all, that was so much fun. That was early, too. Was that the first season? I think so. Yeah, I think so, too. And um, that that wig, it was sort of the just the giant version of what um, Renee, the wig Renee wore. Mm. So it was like huge <laughs> so um Fran and I kept having to not laugh right um well I'm just a brilliant actress let's face facts. it absolute and facts so okay just a stare is pretty elementary it's fairly <laughs> so I think the hardest I'll tell you the hardest part of the scene was uh, I had to sing luck be a lady tonight and I had to go up and down the stairs backwards and forwards singing the song then I had to uh, get the door handle at which wasn't connected at just the right moment and pull it off so it was rather complicated (laughs) Uh, it's like playing Lincoln or something you know yeah 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 significant get it significant I'm with that with that that's amazing did um, i answer yeah okay. you, you did absolutely um yes. so amy bin young asks uh other than the nanny what was your favorite role that you've played in tv or theater and is there any roles that you would love to play in the future yeah that's a heavy question right there like that's yeah, one like everybody everybody okay. everybody I actually did my had my favorite role quite recently, at I uh, which was Captain Hook in Peter Pan. Oh, Jen Colella, Jen Colella from um, uh, from Come From Away. She played Peter. At, this was in Pittsburgh, and I was Captain Hook, and I loved it. That's amazing. It was so much fun. That is amazing. Oh my goodness, we need we need like video of that to get us through this pandemic situation. Yeah. I need that joy. <laughs> Absolutely, Renee. What about you? Well, I always wanted to do some of the Garbo roles, like Camille and uh, Anna Karenina. And uh, I hope when I'm older that then I'll get an opportunity to do them. I love the idea of dying from tuberculosis. (laughs) And a broken heart. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, such a good sport. I have missed your humor so much in my life. You don't even Me know. Too. <laughs> know. Lauren, what about you? Is there a favorite role that you've had or something that you would love um, to play coming up? Uh, I did. I got to play Barbara Fordham in um, August Osage County. Mm-hmm. And that was, uh, that's a three hour play. It is something else. And Tracy Letts is the writer. And so that was, not only great material, but a real marathon. Mm-hmm. So it was good to have that under my belt. I want to be on a Star Trek series. Mm. Okay, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, come on. Twitter um, fingers, people. Make that work. I love Star Trek so much. It, Leonard Nimoy was my first crush. Okay, ever. okay. Yeah, I'm not, I absolutely am not lying. Wow. I had such a crush on Spock. Well, you'll love this, Lauren. His son lives two doors down from me. Juan, is he single? Wow. <laughs> no, he's married, but he lives literally just <laughs> our neighbor. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that would be, I, I would love to be on. Okay. I'm a I, sci-fi fan, too. I mean, there's I'm nothing wrong with like, that. I'm kind of like Lauren. I would love to do a um, anything sci-fi. I love um I love sci-fi movies and um, or or like an action. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. Matrix um, type uh, show. Um, uh, but I I also I love my favorite role was um, um, well minor accomplishments. I loved that character because she was just such a you know go getter and um, right. uh, that was probably one of my most favorite. And I loved Gotham too because I was evil. yes. Yeah, <laughs> Those, I mean that happens. Science fiction and horror things are so much fun because you literally enter this whole other universe. Especially on right. TV, they built the sets and the costumes. I remember doing a Stargate 
uh, up in Vancouver, and I couldn't believe it. You walk on the into this soundstage, and you're in this other universe. I got to like literally fly a starfighter, and they had this wow. thing wow. And in it, and they have the screen going past. The and I was like, oh my god, this is easy to act because you're just doing it. It's like- Because you're there, right? Oh, I'm so off jealous. World, you know, <laughs> off, in an off-world aircraft. So it was, yeah, I always loved doing that. And I, I did a thing called The Magicians up in Vancouver too, which was a sort of horror fantasy thing. And right. again, same thing, these incredible sets that you walk into and you're just in this other universe. And it, it's like being a kid again. You're just playing wow. this huge, expensive sound. Yeah. Yeah, and we're all going to be doing um, Charlie's Angels. Uh, Renee and Lauren and I are are going to be um, in the remake of Charlie's Thank Angels. You. With, you know, Charlie, Thank of course. You. Being Charlie. All that. I'm the voice on the telephone. <laughs> yeah. I want all of that right now. Like, make that happen. That's better than the nanny in space. I love it. Angels. <laughs> no. Good morning, like, Angels. Anything that Catherine O'Hara has done, I would sell an arm or something. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's so, my favorite. That's Brilliant. amazing. That's Brilliant. amazing. Uh, Charlie, are you still doing My Fair Lady? I'd love to see you do that. All right. You know, I'm getting almost too old, but not quite. I, I'll do it until they tell me not to. I've done it like four times now, I think. It's amazing. I love it. It's like, my, it is. Harrison. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Great. I could probably, yeah. It, it begins work. to get sort of a little iffy when... The Eliza is suddenly, you know, could be your granddaughter. It, it <laughs> just about was your when she could be your granddaughter. It gets a little iffy, but eh, except eh. Charlie, I oh. mean, look at oh, the seen movie. Love in the afternoon with Gary Cooper. There you and go. Audrey Hepburn. It right, and right. I know. I saw it the other day, and I'm like. This is sort of slightly disturbing. Little Lolita down. And did you see Sabrina with Humphrey Bogart in yeah, there? Yeah, mm -hmm. you can do that. You could, but you you try reversing it the other way, and it I, you you'd never get That's it on insane. the movies. Oh my goodness! Oh, oh my I goodness. could do it. I could do me and there you go. Oh, you can be yeah, it's like Sweet Bird of Youth. You can do that. That that works, especially in that fabulous dress. It, yeah, definitely, definitely. Damn, girl. I mean, you know. I'm just, <clears throat> let me clean myself up a little bit over here. <laughs> um, actually, there's been uh, quite a few fans that have asked, uh, would you guys be open to a reunion series episode or anything for the nanny? Um, would, would you guys be open to that? Well, I don't know. I mean, if it works, I, I don't quite know how you do it. It depends how much. <laughs> Maybe it would be a prequel. Ooh, ooh, there good. we go. Well. Uh, but, but none of us could be in it. What? It, to be, it would have to be a yeah. sequel. Yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. carryover. Definitely yeah. carryover. Yeah. Or it could be us all five or six years later. <laughs> there you sure. go. And they just it could the be the real dream. Yeah, yeah. Five, we could be like, you know, <laughs> now, and then we all get together and tell each other about this dream we had that we were all in this family. <laughs> Oh, I like that. It turns out we're not That's actually good. a family. We're all co-workers or something. And we oh, get my goodness. That's funny. And we talk about this weird <laughs> dream we had where, yeah, and you were the dad, you were the daughter. Oh, my God, you were the mom. That and be fun. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's hilarious! That's I think hilarious. That's, an, that's a yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I want to see that happen. Like a Jumanji in some capacity. type thing. Like oh, characters. Ooh. You just put a whole other layer on that. That's mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Uh, Liliana Mar Maria Redwanski asks, "Who are some of your favorite guest stars?" Ooh, that's a great oh, question. That's a great. Yeah, so many. I mean, there that was so my so many. Thing about the show, people say, "What was your favorite mm -hmm. thing about the show?" It's unquestionably the guest stars. They started out with Carol Channing in episode two, who uh -huh. sort of suddenly, uh, you know, allowed other guest stars to come on. Uh -huh. But, you know, Marvin, we, and it was always sort of inside baseball guest stars. They'd have Marvin Hamlish, Burt Baccarat, Donald O'Connor, right. all these icons. Um, uh, the and all the singers that were on. Um, yeah, John, and like Elton Elton John, John, and yeah. Celine Dion. Uh, I favorite was uh, Elizabeth Taylor because yeah. she was just 
a simple, plain, everyday person. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> he was very nice to it. I mean, inc- uh, I, this is my experience. When we did a scene, she was there and very, but I also watched, like, we had 2,000 people on set that day, which we never, ever had. So clearly, it. I, I wouldn't want to have to live my but life. She was wearing a big diamond ring, and I said, could I try that on? She said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the smack of the hand. Oh my goodness. Oh Donald my goodness. O'Connor. I think I think it was worth four million dollars and everybody wanted to try it on. Wow. I mean, I she mean, was afraid of it being stolen because I look like, you know, I would put it in my bosom. Yeah. <laughs> she had every right to be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. So before we get out of here, is there anything uh, last minute that you want to say to the fans that are watching at home? Thank you for staying up late, those of you who are joining us. And I'm going to tell you something, if it'll go no further than this soon. Okay. (laughs) I'm not wearing any underwear. (laughs) (laughs) You are going to get those chocolates from Switzerland. I'm going to tell you that right now. Somebody's going to send you (laughs) something. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. So, but with almonds, slivered almonds. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, my goodness. So much fun. Let's do it again. Yes, yes indeed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for bringing back watching. memories to me. Like, yeah, and I love that part of this. On you guys. Next time, let's have champagne. Oh, okay. yes. Yes. We'll do it as a celebration. That is the little, way. A little later, I, you, you know, know. I'd like to just say something to the people watching, too, just to say thank you not only for tuning in today, but for tuning in, you know, every night. It's on somewhere. And it's it's you guys that are keeping this this going. You're keeping Absolutely. the magic of the Natalie going. Because people letters. Are, generations are watching it. Kids are watching it. Write uh, letters to Sony to say, bring back the nanny yes just let them know work for practically nothing <laughs> just chocolates and champagne yeah chocolate champagne and clay i've been working on i've been working on a sequel i have okay all right so let's make this happen you I'll guys heard it here anyway. yes yes if you need a fan you know proofread i'm your guy i got you i'm, I'm there so and just this well, is thank you victor for doing this oh too. my thank pleasure you. My, my thank, you. Yes, thank you victor thank you, thank you. Thank you. and i just wanted to say Quickly, really quickly, um, Daniel Davis wanted to join us, but he had just recently moved and was overwhelmed with like boxes and, and so in all the future. Love. Give him our love because yeah, you know, yes. the three of us and Danny are the same natural blonde color. <laughs> I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, Thank you guys so very much for joining. Uh, To everyone watching, don't forget, uh, whether you're watching live or watching later on Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube, check out those paid exclusive experiences like one-on-one private video chats, autographs, and custom video recorded messages at wizardworldvirtual.com. I am Victor Dangerous, the hardest working man in comics, saying thank you to all. Uh, You guys were so fantastic. I appreciate your time, your energy, everything. This was a joy, and I appreciate it so much. I'm going to go watch The Nanny right now, actually. Thank so, you, Victor. Right. And don't forget about Renee's sex tape. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I won't forget that at all. Nope, nope. Not not the slightest. Am I turning red right now? Am I blushing? I might be blushing. Oh, my goodness. Me and Kanye, who's a regular kind of guy. The hottest thing on the web. Listen, I'll be your Kanye. How about that? There we go. There we go. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Hi, this is Aaron Ashmore, and you are watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe like, like now. Oh, and have fun and follow your fandom.